Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here because lately I seem to not at all ever remember to put my touch mark on things. Kind of true, kind of not true. The reality is, is that I've been working on some projects where what I don't want to do is I don't want to stamp a touch mark in there because we don't know how much material we're going to be removing off the top and we also don't want to be bending it by stamping and hot stamping a touch mark. Now there is a technique that people use called electro etching and they will electro etch their mark onto a blade and you can do this either when it's finished or very close to finish and what it does is you pass an electric current through a solution called an electrolyte over a stencil which then means that you burn in, you etch in a very precise mark. So what I've done is I have gotten myself some gear. We have an electro etching device and we also have the requisite materials and supplies to be able to make our own stencils. It's a tricky process, but it's quite interesting because what it does is it uses this box right here, which makes some UV light over some, I guess, UV reactive special filter type stuff, which means that we can take a design. In this case, we're gonna be trying out some of these things. Alex is gonna be doing the bulk of this while I finish off the Falchion. I don't know if this is in time or out of time or in front of time or back to the future or back in the past. First thing that we need to do though is we need to show you what happens. So this is some transparent paper. So we've got this document open in Illustrator with a couple of different sizes um, of a couple of different examples of the logo that we could use. We'll hit print. And we're gonna load in some transparent paper into the machine. We'll see, did it work great? So we've got a bunch of different examples up top of what we can use. We also have the touch mark. So we're gonna work on making a logo of the touch mark itself, as well as the A steel with the touch mark. So you can get cracking with that. I'm gonna get back to the Falchion and you guys are gonna be in the safe hands of Alex. Good luck. So, first things first, I'm going to cut it out. And there we go. I'm going to lay that down in the UV machine, right in the middle of the UV lights. Close that up. So, the thing we need is right in here, in this silver bag. It develops in UV light. It develops also in just light. We need to be very careful with this. So, into the dark room. I need to cut off a piece of the Jura stencil. Okay, I got it. And now, I gotta make a run for it. Let's go. I'm running for three and a half minutes. And what you'll see when I remove the stencil, that it already has a bit of contrast in there. The second step, we'll be developing it. Which means we come to my favorite part, which is removing the two little films from the stencil. There we go, so that's one, and that's two. So this is simple developer fluid. Spray some of that in our high-tech developing box, cover the top as well. So it's been about a minute, and now I'm going to start to scrub the surface gently, ever so gently, to not damage any of the other parts of the stencil. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, and you can see that we're removing the blue bits of the stencil away from the logo. So the instructions say that you're just supposed to keep this in there for about a minute and it will scrub right off. But yesterday, when I was experimenting with it, I found out that just leaving it in there for, say, 30 minutes gets a way better result. So we're going to try that. A little explanation on what the UV light does to this stencil. It helps the polymer, which the Dyna stencil is made of, to cross-link, form a bond, and basically that means it just hardens it out. Now, the black on the stencil that we put in there blocks the UV light, meaning that that section won't harden. So now I should be able after developing to just wipe that part right off. So let's try. All right, so we've been scrubbing this gently with the sponge for the last half hour. And um, this is probably the most detail that we can get out of there. So it's time for the next step, which is rinsing it in water to get the slimy little layer of that. We're going to place it gently in there and harden it on each side for about two minutes. Okay, so our stencil is ready. What we're going to try now is etching with it. Now, I did some practicing with this yesterday. I'm going to tape up all four sides using some plain electrical tape to keep the etching fluid from seeping under the stencil and ruining the edge. These are the etching electrodes. So 
What we're going to do is we're going to hook up the positive side. In this case, we're using the piece itself. Right now, I'm going to apply the electrolyte to the etcher. The etching is, has a nice and dark color despite the problems with the details, but what Alec really wanted was to have a relief in the steel. So what we find out is that the kit comes with this clip for deep etching. So I'm going to give the stencil a wipe, stick it back on there in a the new spot, hook up the deep etching clip, hook that up to the piece and give it another go. So that was about two cycles of eight seconds. There is now a relief, there is depth to this edge. I can feel it with my fingernail. The problem with it though, is that you can see that there isn't any sort of nice and dark color. How do we get a nice edge that both has a relief in it and a dark color? I found out that the most effective method for getting the edge that we want will be doing three cycles of eight seconds of deep etching and then one cycle of eight seconds of doing normal etching, which will give us our relief first and then fill that in with that nice black color. So here we go. Now, let's find out if that gave us the result we wished for. There's a clear, distinct difference between the three tries. So, it seems like we have a good result here. So, since we found out that the other one had too little detail in it, we've made a new template in a new font, or a bold font. So, we're gonna try that one. Have a look. I'm coming, I'm coming. So wait, just describe this. What point are you at in the process? We have just figured out that this works on the mask of species. Oh man, that is bad to the bone. It goes right through and creates, that's, that's a perfect depth. It's never gonna rub off. Good work. Now we just gotta do it on the falchion. Oh dear. <laughs> How you feel about doing it on the falchion? Tense. Why is that? <laughs> Well, you know what, like tense, like somebody that spent two days hand sanding it? <laughs> like that type of tense? Yeah, that, that's, that, yeah, that gets close. And yeah. the risk of more days of hand sanding? Well, it needs it. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I like that. I like the confidence. That's perfect. That's really, really nice. Great work, Alex. <laughs> Great work. That was tense. So from this point, it just needs a little buff up yep. and it's gonna be really nice. And the blade is gonna need the buff up anyway, you know, before it's finished. It's been out in the workshop, fingerprints and stuff like that but uh, I'm really pleased. You've done a great job working on this little project here the whole day. Alex, I really appreciate your good help. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Make sure you guys go follow him on Instagram at Bull Blades. Thank you guys for watching. It's been, a, been another fun day. I can't wait to see you very soon. Bye-bye.